Hello and welcome to Picture This, a podcast from the photo archives of the Albuquerque Museum. My name is Jill Hartke, and I am the digital archivist here at the museum. Grab a slice of pie and sit back as we serve up the story of the Harvey Girls. In the photo archives of the Albuquerque Museum, is a photograph of women wearing black dresses with white aprons, serving meals to customers at the Alvarado Hotel. Here's the story behind the photograph. The whole thing started with a British man named Fred Harvey. He immigrated to the United States as a teenager and later found work as a freight agent on the railroad. As he traveled around, he realized the railroad offered no food for sale on the trains. So passengers were forced to purchase food from vendors at fueling stops. The food was often of terrible quality and always overpriced. Fred Harvey saw an opportunity to provide good food in a clean dining room to train passengers. He began with one restaurant in Topeka, Kansas, and he hired men as waiters and cook staff. People in Topeka flocked to the restaurant, which was the best in town. He hired more waiters and began to build his restaurant empire along the Atchison, Topeka, and Santa Fe Railway. There was one problem, the waiters. The men had trouble following Harvey's many rules, and Fred Harvey had a habit of showing up unannounced and firing employees for having dirty fingernails or setting a table in the wrong way. The men were living in the so-called Wild West, and the waiters would show up for work hungover or with black eyes or busted lips from a fight. Drunken, bruised men serving food to weary railway passengers was not the image Fred Harvey wanted to hitch his entrepreneurial wagon to. Cheers! So he decided to hire women. But waitressing in the 1880s was not viewed as a respectable job. In the minds of many, it was just one step above working in a brothel. So Fred Harvey had to change that mindset in order to make his enterprise successful. He advertised through newspapers published in the East and Midwest, looking for a certain type of woman to be a Harvey girl. A woman would answer the advertisement and then go to Kansas City for an interview. At that interview, the Fred Harvey Company checked to assure themselves that the applicant was between 18 and 30 years old, of good moral character, attractive, she had good manners and speech, she needed at least an eighth grade education, and she had to be unmarried and agree not to marry while employed as a Harvey girl. The women who met the requirements could sign a contract for six, nine, or 12 months at a time. They were given a basic wage plus tips, and after six weeks of exhaustive training, they were sent off to their first Harvey house. Room and board were provided, plus they had free train travel. Once they arrived, there were many rules to follow. In the earliest years, the women wore black and white uniforms that were meant to show their modesty to travelers and railroad men that they served. In later years, the uniform became a shorter white dress and apron with a black bow tie. The uniforms had to stay clean, and the women were forbidden the use of makeup or jewelry. The rules were enforced by a Harvey House matron, and infractions could quickly lead to dismissal. Along with the rules in the dining room and about their appearance, Harvey girls agreed to not throw trash in the toilets, not hammer nails or tacks into the walls of their room, clean the bathtub after they use it, be in their rooms by 11 p.m., and never, ever, ever spit on the floor. In time, Fred Harvey and the Harvey girls began to change the way that waitressing as a profession was viewed. Fred Harvey died in 1901, and if it had all ended there, it still would have been a story worth telling, but Albuquerque would not have been in it. However, Fred Harvey's children continued the enterprise and the expansion of Harvey houses along the railroad. In Albuquerque, the Alvarado Hotel opened on May 11, 1902, and with it came the Harvey girls. Until its closure in 1970, Harvey girls like Neva Davis, Effie Jinks, June McCrary, Edith Hazelton, and Gladys Bronson served up meals in the dining rooms, coffee shop, and at the lunch counter. 
They slept two to a room in the dormitory, and each small room provided two single beds and a dresser. The back door was locked at curfew, and when they were stuck outside, some girls attempted to climb over the fence to get back in. In the dining room, the tables were covered with white cloths, and china and silverware were placed in exactly the same way at each seat. Harvey girls had the tremendous task of feeding legions of travelers who arrived hungry and had a short time before their journey continued. The chaos was less than you might imagine. Conductors had menus that they handed out to passengers about an hour outside of town. They then telegraphed the food orders to the Harvey house, thereby starting the meal service before the train actually arrived at the station. By the time the passengers stepped off their coaches, the first course was waiting at their table. Harvey girls were not supposed to speak to each other in front of customers, and they never wrote down any orders. So a Harvey girl would approach a table and ask what the customer wanted to drink. If the Harvey girl left the cup upright in the saucer, the customer wanted coffee. If she turned it upside down on the saucer, the customer wanted tea. If she turned it upside down and leaned it against the saucer, the customer ordered iced tea. And if she flipped the cup upside down and placed it on the table, the customer wanted milk. Servers coming along behind carrying pitchers of these drinks knew exactly what to serve and to whom. It was like magic to the passengers, this effortless dining experience. Like most seemingly effortless endeavors, the Harvey girls and the kitchen staff worked feverishly behind the scenes. The Harvey girls at the Alvarado Hotel served over 500 people a day in up to eight meal sittings as the trains came and went. During World War II, they served the troop trains, which meant nearer to two or 3,000 meals served in the day. June McCrary remembered meeting servicemen from around the world and serving the Japanese internees at the dining room. The menu items highest in demand were the special blend of coffee and the pie. Fred Harvey's pie was famous because the recipe was tasty and the slice was huge. Most restaurants cut their pies into six pieces, but at the Harvey houses, the pies were cut into fours. Diners at the Alvarado Hotel did not leave hungry. In the heyday of train travel, the Alvarado Hotel was a stop that nobody wanted to miss. Celebrities would routinely arrive on their way to and from California. Neva Davis remembered one famous customer's order in particular. Once, Bob Hope came in alone and ordered a sirloin steak. Tipped me 50 cents. That was generous. People didn't pay attention to the percentage thing. They tipped you whatever they had, she said. Alongside the travelers, the Harvey girls fed locals. Not all Harvey houses had a large rail yard beside it, but the Alvarado did. Some of the workers at the rail yard lived at the Alvarado. The rail yard men were regular customers at the lunch counter, and their quick meal breaks meant the Harvey girls were rushed off their feet trying to get the food out to the workers in short order. Between the meals and after their 10 or 12 hour shifts, the Harvey girls had a wonderful time building friendships. They had fun in their dormitories. Gladys Bronson, a Harvey girl at the Alvarado Hotel, was a ballet dancer who tried to teach the rest of the girls how to dance. The girls would go swimming at Tingley Beach. They set up trees at Christmas time and men would use it as an excuse to come up and see where the girls lived. Many of the Harvey girls met their husbands in the Harvey House kitchens or in the lunchrooms. They had to give up their jobs if they chose to marry, and they did. But the fond memories of their time as a Harvey girl was something they held on to, and the bonds of friendship forged between Harvey girls was strong. By the middle of the 20th century, train travel was beginning to decline in popularity, and so the Harvey girls transitioned to the airports and the interstates including opening a restaurant at the Albuquerque Airport. In 1968, the Fred Harvey Company was purchased by a larger corporation, and it lost its connection to the Atchison, Topeka, and Santa Fe Railroad. Just a couple of years later, the Alvarado Hotel was demolished in Albuquerque. Ultimately, there were around 100,000 young women who left home for adventure along the railways as Harvey girls. They were intrepid forerunners of the women's movement. They left home to earn their own money, make their own decisions, and sign their own employment contracts. Not only were they tasting independence for maybe the first time, but they were changing the nation 
Fred Harvey and the Harvey Girls reshaped the way waitressing was viewed and turned it into a profession women were proud to join. Today, across the country, there are still Harvey Girl reunions, where those who worked at Harvey houses and their descendants proudly gather to share memories and experiences as Harvey Girls. Thank you for joining us for Picture This with the Albuquerque Museum. Please join us next time for the story behind another photograph in the museum's collection.